dying to show it on the stream. It's like, this is exactly why I have the Yggyorg classroom, because this is the type of thing I wanted to instill in a player base. I was I, so I, proud of this person. <laughs> I like how you've hyped this up. I'm getting Tenacious D vibes, where we're going to ask them to sing the greatest song in the world. We're going <laughs> to so, get soul. They, they are on book bag. They, it's my exact deck list that we had from the last stream. They are against a Chinese opponent here, maybe Japanese. Uh, they've got the world, virtual world play mat, or oh, sorry, world legacy play mat. Like they, they clearly have, they're all decked out. We're, we're here in plat, and this is a very typical start. You try and play your true Draco thing so that if they do Ash, your card or demise, you know, you get your effect, activate your trap. And there's a skill drain and an upstart. And because Ash Blossom negates card of demise, you no longer have to discard your hand, so it's super free to just flip up this upstart goblin. Yep, seems like a very good start for yep. the True Draco player. True Draco Apocalypse being the priority because it allows you not only to normal summon this maiden on your opponent's turn, but also pop your other cards. Here's a Regeki, so let's go get another trap. Actually, no, you won't. Fantastic. This person has played Regeki and two Ash Blossoms. <laughs> that, that's that's just it. We're both on three cards, and you're on Foolish Burial for a Drytron monster. So the Skill Drain is not going to do anything here. Hmm. However, the Drytron player had to tribute Natasha without summoning it properly, and that gives you an awful lot of information. That, for example, they didn't already have Ben 10 that they just searched for. In fact, they had nothing. Yeah, they were they're limping. Yeah. And that means that their hand is a Ben 10 they can't play, an unknown, and a zero defense monster. So, this goes to a concept called, who's the beatdown? I'm sure anyone who plays any card game long enough will hear those words. So, and just to give for people, viewers, that are maybe unfamiliar with that one. This is actually an article written by Magic the Gathering ages ago. Like, I was a teenager when it came out. And the idea behind it is that one player is the aggressor, and the other player is trying to turn the corner and essentially well, the beatdown player is trying to kill you as fast as possible the other player is then trying to survive when they turn the corner is when they get control of the game the point is is that if you misallocate which role you are in a game you are going to lose because if you think you're the beatdown and you're getting killed a lot faster you you're going to make decisions that are incorrect when you should be or right, i need to react to my opponent's strategy rather than advancing my own strategy exactly and, you need to know exactly what which of those two roles you are in, in a game. The easiest way to internalize it is to think of beat down as you have to beat down your opponent's ceiling. The ceiling being the maximum output of what they currently have. Our opponent's ceiling right now is the ability to swing for 2,000. That, that's really all they have. So our ceiling is normal summon a monster and attack over it. We are clearly in control here. We can tribute summon Ignis Heat, we can beat up the Thuban, and then pass turn. We could do that, but that's the thing. We're the control. Our opponent is the beatdown, and by recognizing that, you can see that the correct play to do here is ending your turn. Yep. There is nothing to gain from killing this Drytron except putting it in their graveyard and letting them use it. They can't do anything. They can hit you for 2,000. They can do that four times. That's fine, you've got four times. I would pay, I'd play an upstart goblin that cost me 2,000 life. <laughs> right? I'd play, three, I'd, I'd play that in my deck, no questions asked. And this changes nothing. They, they gained a card that they didn't have last turn. What trap does Drytron play that I give a crap about? It wasn't even an Imperm. You didn't even put it across from my card. So yeah. That was just, that's another upstart goblin. The correct play is still to just end your turn. Now, we've, we've gained a spell. Don't have three names, but we can use it to put a trap in there and get one. But do we use the trap to pop his monster? No. We're putting it in there so that we can draw three cards. And turns out this was called by the grave. That doesn't matter. Uh, not only will Ignis Heat just give us heritage for free now, thank you so much, but Disciples says uh, shuffle them and then draw, not shuffle those targets. So let's just go back two and draw a card instead. Yeah. It's another skill drain. Completely useless, but hey, extra normal summon. Draw a couple of cards. Hey, there's the D-Fissure. Yeah, game's over. 
and suddenly the game is completely over. Yeah, Jerry Reiko has such a monst demonstrably good game against uh, Drytron because the Herald of Perfection can't negate the trap cards triggering in the their effects in the graveyard to destroy the Herald, and you're generally pretty good when you play things like Dimensional Fisher. You lock out the Heralds. Um, yeah, so just excellent play from uh, Orochi here to just completely shut the opponent down. And it's just a case of like not going too aggressive too early. Yeah, definitely just right wait play until because... you see the Fisher. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm in no risk of losing this game unless I unless I try and attack you. Yeah, if if she had attacked that Drytron Alpha, she would have lost the duel the following turn. The Alpha would have been able to tribute the Ben Ten from the hand to come back, and everything would have come crashing down. Yeah, even I mean, if you even if you like, just tribute summoned the Ignis Heat and passed turn without attacking, they could have in main phase two done everything they wanted anyway by just crashing the Alpha into your True Draco monster. But they're not going to do anything with a Ben 10 and an Eva. Hey, welcome, Kev Yu Gi Oh!